um, I've been using Hypothesis in my classrooms for five years now. And um, I'm here, I'm going to be, I have a couple of things I should say. Well, first of all, I'm Juan Pablo Alperin. I'm an assistant professor at Simon Fraser University uh, in Vancouver, Canada. Um, I teach in a publishing studies program. So, and I do my research and my work on scholarly communications, which is how I first attended I Annotate back in 2013, thinking about it from the publisher's perspective and the role that I do uh, building open source software for managing and publishing academic journals, but I was immediately attracted to it as a tool for teaching and learning. At that time, I was a PhD student, and I started using sort of annotation in, in my own classrooms while before Hypothesis was really ready for prime time. And I've then, since I've become a professor, started from my very first year trying this out into my classrooms. Uh, I, I have a tendency to speak quickly, so I'm going to continue on that tendency because I only have, oh, I forgot to start my timer. Uh, so, because I have a lot to get through, I'm also going to rapid fire throw a lot of graphs and statistics at you from the research that I've been doing around annotation. So, uh, you might want to look up if you're interested, uh, because the slides and the images are going to be coming and going at a, at a rapid pace so that I can get to this wealth of data that I've collected over my last, uh, during this last semester and the work that I've been doing. Uh, as someone who is sort of very passionate about teaching, I naturally uh, found myself asking for two course releases from my university to be able to do research and, and to promote the use of online annotations. So over the last year, I've spent time at Simon Fraser University running workshops and teaching faculty and trying to encourage this practice. And over the last semester, I had six classrooms running uh, hypothesis uh, in classrooms other than, as well as on my own classroom. Uh, and so then I, was I managed to collect some data, um, interview and survey the students, and that's what I'm going to talk to you a little bit about today. Trying to learn a little bit more about how, why, and what students actually annotate in different courses. Um, I just want to give a little shout out, and often this comes at the end, but I think it's important to put it at the beginning that this work I have wasn't, isn't work that I've done on my own. I have two uh, research assistants that have been working in, my, uh, in the scholarly communications lab, which is my research group, Alice Freelackers and uh, Esteban Morales, and Remy, who, Remy Kalir, who you've all heard. Um, I met him at Iannotate two years ago, and we decided we should collaborate on something, and so I brought him on board as sort of being the person that's actually doing research and education. This is really not my research area, it's just something that I wanted to, to do, so I thought I should bring someone from education on board, and Remy and I have been working nicely uh, together on this project. Um, I'll just start off by sort of a little bit, this is from one of my earlier, I presented this at I annotate two years ago. Uh, this is probably my favorite quote out of all the surveys and times that I've had feedback from students. Uh, I just want to say like a student that gives at the very end of the term saying, I enjoyed reading the annotations alongside the text primarily because it helps me engage with the text at the sentence level. I'm the product of an educational system where annotation and critical reading was not encouraged and not taught. So the hypothesis tool really helps me understand how to read critically, as opposed to just absorbing information. I've actually asked my friends, students, and professors outside of Vancouver to use this tool. This is sort of like captures like why it is that as a, as a teacher, as someone that's trying to encourage learning, encourage critical thinking skills, hypothesis sort of seems to work for some students. Uh, my second probably favorite quote is, uh, the very honest student who says, to be completely honest, I was never one to read, uh, to read every reading fully, and this forced me to. And they recognize that this is not a bad thing. So I just want to say, this is not just about all of the, oh, let's just think about all of these great pedagogical outcomes. This is actually a great pedagogical outcome from a, maybe a little bit of a, of a different perspective, but it's really, it's really uh, true that hypothesis does different things for different students. And I think I wanted to sort of dig into this a little bit, a little bit more. Um, so I was saying, I, I managed to uh, get this teaching fellowship at SFU, um, where I would promote annotations across the university, several courses. I ran, I was running it in six classrooms. I would consider three of those, running it into those, uh, out of those six classrooms, I would consider three of those to be, have been a successful implementation of hypothesis. And I won't really have time to dig into some of the reasons why the other three weren't successful, but something for us to, if you'd like to sort of catch me and we can talk a little bit about at the break, some of the barriers that those other instructors found and the reasons that those courses didn't have enough adoption for me to sort of say, okay, this is a course actually worth um, for us to dig into and study more what happened, because I actually just think it becomes a question of, it was a poor implementation, not poor outcomes of, of the use of the tool. 
I collected uh, all of the annotations from the courses through the API. We surveyed all of the students and actually got, uh, in one of the courses, only eight students, we got all of the students to respond. In the other courses, we had over 50% of the students in the class respond. Uh, and then I interviewed each of the instructors in the courses. So that's why I have a lot of things that I need to uh, run through and dig into because we sort of collected a wealth of information about three courses that are in themselves not so big in terms of the number of students, but uh, sort of we have a very full picture of what went on into those, into those classrooms. Just again, overview, just some numbers. I told you, you're, this is gonna be a very sort of numbers and, and graph heavy presentation. I just wanna give you a sense of the scale that we're working at. If you look at the number of users in each course, this is the number of annotators in each group. So in one of them, it was 10, there was eight students, and there was a TA and, a, and an instructor making 10. The other course is around just a little over 20, around 25 students uh, annotating in each course. And the volume of annotations varied quite a bit. So in one of the courses, the other publishing course is a colleague of mine in publishing. She's, run, she's used hypothesis before in her classroom. And so uh, and some of the students in that class sort of annotated um, uh, you know, almost sort of over four times as much as in one of the other courses, even though that had the same number of students and annotated um, uh, sort of a, somewhere a little bit more than the course that had 10 10 students. So again, you see quite a range in terms of the number and volume. So when I show you some of these graphs where we survey the students and we look at the annotations, keep in mind this is coming from a different number of students in each one. So this is just sort of when you, for you to refer back to and, and have in your mind around the, the different um, things that happen uh, or the different kinds of classes. Uh, just to give you just the overview, it's a GERO is a gerontology course, the GSWS is gender and women's studies course, and PUB is a publishing course. So very different subject matters uh, in all three of them. Um, give you a different sort of sense that the, the kind of annotations that students do actually varies quite a bit uh, by courses. This is just to give you a sense of the, uh, the sense of uh, how long the annotations were. And so you see that in the pub 480 course, the there was more annotations, but also uh, the annotations were sort of on average longer than the annotations in, in the other courses. Um, and you get always a bit of a range, right? So it's like well, as soon as you're getting into those dots, that's the 25th percentile uh, that's sort of above the and sort of beyond the, the one standard deviation from the fifth percentile there, where you're seeing like some students are really annotating really long things, right? And then some students, the core of them are sort of uh, around 250 characters, and for the other two courses, probably a little, I like, can't quite read exactly, but it's probably around 150 characters or so. So about the length of a tweet uh, for the median annotation, or the old tweets, not the, not the new tweets. I've been on Twitter for a long time. Uh, Another kind of differences, so we're just looking at some of the different things, number of URLs included in the annotation, so trying to get a sense of how much are they linking out. Huge range, so in terms of, I don't remember, there was over a thousand annotations in the Pub 480 course, there's about four URLs in those annotations. In the gerontology course, it was around 750 annotations and there was 34 URLs in those. So you, not that many things linking out, uh, but again, quite a range between the different courses. And this is sort of give you a sense of the different annotator types. And this is actually something that in all the classes I've looked at, so beyond even just these three, on the one side of the graph you're getting, on the left is the number of annotations per uh, person, uh, and, and they're just like in a rank order. So the, the, the place where they are is like the further up, they're the person that annotated the most. On the other side is the median length of that person's annotation. So what you see is that some people annotate a lot, but very short annotations. So those are all the downward sloping lines. Some people don't annotate very much, but annotate very long. And then some people are sort of more in the middle. And, at the, right? and so you get sort of the different kinds of annotators. And this is just to show you one course. Uh, in the course with the smaller students, you still get that same kind of like crisscross effect where you just get a sense that there's different types. We haven't done very much around trying to classify annotators into this group, which is sort of, then this is the preliminary stuff to give you that sense of the different kinds of people that we find, even just based on these two dimensions of how frequent and, and how long. And then we surveyed the students. First, we wanted to get a sense of first their motivations for annotating, and they're coming in. So we asked them uh, questions around, uh, like beyond this class, how often they annotated, just to get a sense like, are you generally an annotator? And this is sort of giving us that baseline parameter of are these students coming in, students that are already have the practice of annotating regardless of what form. And what you find is actually pretty, so you know, you get like in two of the classes, about 50% of the students were on the agree side. Very few students sort of like are strong annotators saying that they strongly agree. Uh, in one of the other courses, uh, students are really very much not annotators. Actually, it's in the course where they did the most annotations in the end, our students that were very much on the disagree on that side. So just getting you a sense of that baseline. Um, when we asked them if they liked reading assigned text, again, this was just like, 
you like reading assigned text in general, you know, the students are, again, you know, some in, the, in one of the classes, the students, uh, there was, you know, 30, almost 40% that strongly agree. Most of the students are a little bit more in that middle. They like it, they don't love it. It's just part of what they have to do as uh, students. Just giving you that sort of baseline. Um, we asked them just open ended questions around, if you annotated, can you tell us why you annotated? The, we haven't done, this is just again very preliminary, we've only just, this term just ended a month ago, so we've just started going through them. We've tried to pick out the themes that we're seeing without having fully coded them all yet, but just to sort of putting the, these are sort of in rank order that we're getting a sense of from a first pass, okay? Um, the main thing that comes out, why they're motivated, uh, is because it's course requirements and marks. In fact, one of the courses where it wasn't successful, their annotations weren't made, mandatory, and so that was one of the reasons why perhaps we didn't see so much. But personal learning and peer conversations also came up. So those themes around motivations for learning and community building are themes that come up in open-ended responses around why they annotated. When we asked them why they didn't annotate, uh, first of all, and this is the one sort of I highlighted or some that jumped out at me as interesting around, like no, they say they had no valuable ideas to contribute, and so that's something around they need to, like they're not, they are not feeling like they have something to add to the conversation. And then tech issues and having issues around the technology was sort of a second theme that came up a lot. And the third is students that are really not finding the value. They're saying, I don't, have, I don't see why I would be doing this. And again, all of this points to there's pedagogical strategies around how to encourage and motivate it in different ways to make this, them see why it would be useful, but this is what they report. And then we got into some different themes around community building. This is where, if you just sort of want to take a look, without looking, without necessarily needing to worry about all the numbers, you just kind of look where the graph skews, right? That's sort of, a, if you want, like, then not having to think very hard right now, because it's the afternoon and you haven't had a break, just sort of look, is the graph mostly on the agree side or mostly on the disagree side? They feel that annotations is helping them to share their knowledge with their peers. So there's something like this, it's like they're very much in the strongly agree and agree camps, right? So they're very much on that uh, right-hand side, sorry, left-hand side of, of the graph on that agree. So there's a community building component that really seems to be something that the, the students are recognizing. Uh, when you're asking them around whether it helped them understand other points of view and the potential for annotations to sort of help build consensus and help bring other pers people's perspectives, again, we're very much on that left-hand side of, of the graph. So students are recognizing a value around uh, these community building or, or building cohesion or building shared understandings of, of, of questions. When we asked them around sort of different things, we asked, so this is just a few of the questions we asked around perceptions of learning, whether they felt like they were learning, which is uh, or getting some greater understanding or building knowledge, uh, asking them if they made them think about course content and concepts beyond the classroom. Again, we see that the responses are, have the students sort of well over half the class, in some cases almost 80% of the class, um, is very much in the uh, agreeing that the annotations help them to think beyond the classroom. This is just self-reported perceptions of, of what the annotations did for them. And if you ask them, this is sort of like our, let's, this is like that survey that you get asked when you participate in anything and they say, would you recommend a friend to, would you recommend someone to use this? This is sort of our summative question that gets us that sense of like, do you think it was actually useful for learning? Just asking them overall, are annotations using this tool? Did it help you learn? And again, we see that almost nothing on the disagree or strongly disagree side. So everyone is either from neutral with a small percentage and then the vast majority are actually on the, on the usefulness side. So this is students are reporting that this is useful. So those of us that have been using the tools in our classroom for a while, everyone that was sitting up here minutes ago, I know this is gonna come as a surprise, but we wanted to sort of get a sense of documenting it. I want to just touch on a last sort of bit of uh, giving you one more piece. This is all student reported things around what they think. What we tried to do is uh, we actually used a, sort of a framework proposed by Plavinsky and, and others uh, looking for evidence of knowledge construction activity. So trying to think around like what was actually happening in the annotations. And so Plavinsky sort of outlines different activities, different things that we might classify as knowledge construction. So that whether they were using uh, the annotations for clarification, that whether there was conflict and disagreement, these are all places where learning happens or knowledge is created, right? Building consensus, elaborating on an idea, interpreting something, even asking a question is in itself uh, uh, is creating knowledge by even just by the sheer act of questioning and, and, and triggering there's some thinking that has happened and even the understanding that you have a question there is in itself useful. Or support and, and, like, and, and empathizing. All of these different, so we coded for all of these different kinds of activities and we took the annotations from the, all of the courses and tried to see which of these things are present. So every annotation could have one, two, 
more, or any number or even zero of those different examples, what we find is that interpretation and, and elaboration happen the most with question asking coming in third. So this is giving us a sense of if, we, if I get asked, did learning happen in the annotations, this is what I would sort of point to. Like, these are the kinds of learning and knowledge construction that took place on the annotations that wouldn't have happened if the student was just reading on their own. Or it might have just happened for that individual student, but it didn't happen in a collective space for all of the students to, to take advantage of. So we're starting to get this sense. And we're digging into these now a little bit more and trying to see, get a better sense of what these, uh, what these exactly look like. But these, we've actually coded all of the annotations for, the, for these three courses. And so, uh, we sort of asked them, and just to, to finish up sort of quickly, we wanted to sort of know, okay, we've seen you're reporting that you're learning, you're reporting, we're looking at the annotations and we're seeing evidence of certain knowledge construction or certain types of learning. We also asked them, what, a, think of an annotation that's sort of useful to you and tell us why did you think that that annotation was useful. So pick of an example of something that, an annotation or an example that made you, that makes you think that annotation is a valuable practice. And we get the students to report one is that it caused them to think differently. So this is very much, I think, what people imagine of as like happening when someone learns. It's like, oh, okay, there's an idea I hadn't thought of before. Right? But interestingly, also students report usefulness in reconfirming their worldview. And this is something that we probably see online. And if we were to get into a discussion around uh, discussions, commenting, and, and, and anything that sort of happens on the web, where there's very much around the social practice that we look for ways of confirming our own identity and confirming our own beliefs. And this is something that students are actually actively reporting that annotations is helping them do. Uh, it's helping them to understand difficult concepts reading and also just realizing and they, they find value in having helped somebody else. Like when they make their, when you ask them what was useful about the annotations, instead of reporting someone else's annotations helped me, they found it useful when their annotation helped somebody else. I think it just helped them to reaffirm that they had ideas that were worth sharing, which is something that we very much, at least from my philosophy of trying to promote for public knowledge and open knowledge uh, around sort of helping students learn the value of their ideas and that putting them out there is worthwhile, for me is a sort of a very rewarding thing to see reported by the, by the students. I want to just finish off with a couple of last quotes from the students just to think when we ask them how would you like to think them used in the future, um, you know, students say, I think annotations should be incorporated into every class with weekly course readings. It ensures that students are thoroughly reading the course material and coming to class with a sort of like from the surveys of these students that we're just talking about. Students sort of, there is like a sense of like they want this, they want to see this everywhere because they realize the whole class is coming more prepared to participate. And just to finish um, uh, it with sort of saying that not the experience of loving this is not universal. Uh, I don't want to be here just by advertising and promoting all of the virtues of all these things, but I love it. It's just I want to say I don't think it works for the future because many people wrote useless things. And so this is not everybody's experience is the same. And I think that's important for us to finish off. So I'll just sort of finish with these sort of lessons that I think take us what we can learn from the classroom that make us think about how we might use annotations or in the, in the broader context of thinking them out there. Um, I think that annotations, we have evidence that where it's a place where learning happens and it's a place where other learns what other are thinking and where they want to share their thoughts with others. I think that's like the evidence that I've collected from this study sort of tells us this. But not everyone is motivated to annotate when they start, right? So there's something about that intrinsic motivation of the grade that's helping all of this stuff happen. And not that, nor does everyone find the same value in doing them, right? People are reporting different things as valuable, and some people are reporting that it's not valuable. And so that's something for us to also take into any context beyond the educational context. And then the last thing is that how it gets presented, and this is the part where I didn't really get into the discussion around where it didn't work into some of the other classrooms, is how, the, how you present it, how the tool actually works around removing those, that friction, uh, and who the community members are that are participating in the conversations really matter. And so there's a lot of sort of nuance and detail and things that we could unpack from that sort of sentence that sort of captures saying different contexts and different people make the experience different, which is obviously true, but it's something that I think we can point to a lot of different specific examples from these classrooms where uh, we can start to sort of pull that apart and try to figure out how if you're wanting to use annotations in different contexts, um, you might, uh, some lessons to be learned there around how you might do it in a way that leads to, to, better, uh, to better outcomes. So how are we going to, so I was like, how are we going to encourage annotations in general? That's like a question that I think I leave you with. Uh, and more importantly, maybe how are we going to encourage sort of high quality annotations that lead to the positive outcomes out of the things that we'd see that we agree that we want? How are we going to encourage annotations to take those forms and for those communities to form? Thank you.
So if there are questions for one, I'd like if people would come up to the microphone. It makes it easier to capture uh, on video and it makes sure everyone can hear what you're saying. Um, thank you, that was a great presentation. Um, really considering how we do some surveys too, um, did you think of um, asking them also whether or not they would recommend this tool for use in other places, whether it's a classroom or to their friends, um, as a possible way to get back how well they enjoyed um, annotating beyond having it to be for a grade? Mm -hmm. I've done that in previous classes that because I've surveyed my own, so I've been running it in my own classrooms for five years and I've surveyed my own students and I've asked them a question very similar to that. In this survey, the question that we asked is how would you like to see it used in other classrooms? So we say it specifically to the classroom setting and then ask them beyond that. A few of the, because there were some open-ended questions for, like for that one, for example, so we get some responses that come up with things that point to beyond the classroom examples, but for the most part, they sort of talked about uh, different ways of integrating it, saying that they wanted it done the same way as it was this time, but for all the readings, or sort of pointing to um, wanting to see it, um, more examples around, or getting clearer rubrics for how it was graded. So they sort of pointing to things within the classroom context, but not so much beyond it. And um, one other thing, well, if I remember. Mm -hmm. um, did with some of the ones where you said maybe they did not implement as well, do you ever find that maybe annotation doesn't work around certain contexts or is it really just how it's being implemented? In the classrooms, in my in this case, where the other three classrooms were the people that agreed to, the, the instructors, I had had conversations and they wanted to implement it um, and it didn't work. It didn't, I don't think in any of those cases it had to do with the content. There was one classroom where someone wanted to do it but they were using a textbook, an online textbook and the textbook technology wouldn't, wouldn't work with Hypothesis. So that was one where it was very much the, the, techno the, the, the version of the book. In the other courses, it was really more about um, the, some technical problems, the motivations. One of the classrooms, I, actually, I hadn't realized, I was just having this conversation a little bit earlier, I hadn't realized how important it was the way that I've learned how to motivate and encourage its use in the classroom has turned out to be really important. I saw a classroom where there was almost no uptake of annotations. And so I was surprised because it seemed like the kind of course content and the way that it was set up should work. Uh, I, so I said, can I come into your class and talk about it? So I spent 10, 15 minutes at the beginning of one class, about two thirds of the way in. And for the last three weeks, the annotations jumped a significant amount. So something around like I could, could I had the experience and the, the, I could tell them why they would find it useful and I could really explain that in a succinct way and encourage, and then that worked to get them to turn it around. So it was really more, there is a lot of, care and craft that needs to go into putting, making this work in a classroom. And I think that even these instructors will do better the next time around uh, in terms of uh, the kind of uptake that they get because they will all, they'll know the benefits themselves. They'll be able to explain it to the students. Thank you. Yeah. Hey, one, I actually had a question. Yeah. Um, I noticed uh, in the survey data, mm -hmm. Uh, and this may be, you know, I think the end was 12 or something for the publishing class, which I think had the most students yeah. in it. Yeah. But I noticed they were, in the survey data responses, they were the ones who had the highest negativity toward doing it again, I think. Um, I'm mistaken. Yeah, I'm not, I mean, we can go back. I'm not sure which of the, depending on whether they were, uh, uh, whether yeah, it helped them learn. One. There. Um, so you see Pub 480 mm -hmm. um, disagrees. Oh yeah, it was. The yeah, so this is more around like whether it helped them to think about the course content, which, I, right. yeah. So we actually, for each of these, we have like five different questions around motivations, five different questions around community, and five different questions about perceptions of learning. And I've only presented two from each one here, just in the interest of, I thought it, that was probably fast enough for everyone. Uh, but uh, yeah, we, but I, th I think the students in that class, I wouldn't characterize them as being negative when I look at the overall responses from them. Um, like I said, that colleague is one that has run this kind of, has worked with annotations before. And I think that she's, like the students, she keeps doing it because the students do have a positive response to it. Other questions for one? All right, great, thank you very much.